point in time. Has anybody ever watched YouTube of a meeting? Good. Well, I mean, we put them on there, so yeah. All right. I know there's some folks here from Vernon Hills, some folks here from the business community. Anybody here from a business in town? Well, yeah, that's right. You are. That's right. <laughs> okay, are we ready up there? Oh, okay. Okay, well, I don't think we did this last year. We did. Did we do it the year before? 2012. 2012. So this is the uh, state of uh, the village Vernon Hills, that being where we're at now. We're obviously in the council chambers. So what is, uh, I better stand up here. Can, every, can we turn the lights off? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, well obviously this is a pictures of Vernon Hills. Uh, obviously we got the Arbor Theater with the big fountain there. Ball fields, probably at the, the VHAC, which is the old uh, Nike site. And the top one in the top left hand corner is the actual uh, Arbor Theater where we do out, outdoor concerts in the summertime, usually on a, I think a Thursday night. Okay. Anyway, we, we, we've been going through, I think, in town and I hope in everybody else's lives, a steady recovery from the, uh, <clears throat> the Great Recession. Uh, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, more housing starts in town single family being mostly a custom lots and uh, uh, Greg's Landing. Uh, the Oaks is getting close to build out and that was some high end luxury type apartments. But there's also uh, some other single family home developers that wanna, would like to come to town. And uh, some of it could happen on the Loyola property, which is the old Cuneo um, you know, Museum and Gardens. And uh, so we've had a record, this year we had a record setting attendance at the final holiday light show, uh, which we've ran, I'm gonna say what, from the late 80s? 1994 we started? Okay, Larry, thank you. Larry's our uh, crack finance director. Uh, 1994, so it had a run of about 21 years. I think that I could credit that to Ed Laudenslager, who used to be our public works director uh, before Dave Brown, who's sitting over to my right. Uh, and because I think they were doing it down in Peoria. So um, this year we're a recipient of the Lake County Municipal League Innovation Award uh, for the Victory Center uh, for those that don't know where it's at, it's the senior housing project in uh, Vernon Hills. There's 120 affordable apartments, which means it's based on your, your income. Uh, there's also 120 assisted living units, so a total of 240. And uh, are, we, are we full over there? In both buildings right now? Yeah. So at some point, uh, <clears throat> In our, our last strategic plan, which was a couple of years ago, where we sat down and were deciding, you know, things that we, we would still like to do in town, we'd like to bring <clears throat> more senior housing to town. And, uh, you know, we'll accomplish that, uh, but it's not, we're not really, uh, we're not in active negotiations with any developers. We've got to kind of find some land, more land for that, but we will. Um, retirement of longtime manager uh, took place this year, uh, Mike Allison. I don't know if any of you folks knew him, you probably did. And uh, John Kalmar is our new village manager, but not exactly because he was assistant manager for many moons. 14. Okay. And uh, so far that's working out pretty good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what it is. 
Uh, our finance department, which is led by Larry uh, Knacker. And Larry, you want to raise your hand or something? Yeah, Larry has, has done a fine job for the village. Now, d did you come in 84? Okay, I'm glad you agree with me on that one. Uh, attained a, uh, we, we, we still attained a AAA bond rating <coughs> from S&P and maintained our AAA bond rating uh, with Moody's. Uh, on, only five cities in this state have AAA bond ratings with both uh, agencies. Uh, we did implement uh, a home rule sales tax of 2.5% uh, or a quarter cent to offset the West, Westfield development, which involves obviously the AMC, AMC theater. Uh, and it, you know, it helped them fund uh, major capital improvement projects there. So, and that's gonna open April, uh, May 1st. So uh, hopefully that'll attract more, you know, some, some nicer inline stores as they call them. Uh, there's anchors up there <coughs> that uh, include Sears, Carson's, uh, Macy's, and uh, Penny's. And uh, the inline stores are obviously the stores in the mall itself. Uh, <coughs> we've uh, refunded part of the bond series 207 for a save, refunded uh, a, the, a bond series two, in two, 2007 for a savings of $240,000. And uh, Larry Nackern and the village uh, was awarded the GFOA Certificate of Achievement for the 13th year in a row. What does that stand for, Larry? Okay, thank you. Uh, community development building permit activity has recovered to pre-recession levels. As I mentioned earlier, <coughs> residential construction in Greg's Landing and uh, the Oaks, which is down here on Route 45, it's about 300 apartment units. And then uh, we have the lowest commercial vacancy in, in rate in the last five years. You know, in the business parks, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that's the vacancy right there. We're using that 5% on that, or is that a little higher? Yeah, probably in the te teens. Yeah, you know, and, and what's interesting is, you know, if you drive through the business parks, there's still land available there. So going into the future, I would think at some point, uh, you know, the office industrial uh, business will will come here in, in you know over probably the next 10 or 15 years uh, the new mall entrances have uh, been completed at Westfield we, we also have uh, Dave and Buster's Maggiano's and a smash burger McDonald's renovation and rebranding took place it was at 60 and 21 we have a triple, AAA Car Care Plus, which is uh, out in front of the Mariano's and um, uh, Home Deep, not Home Depot, Lowe's. We have a Hobby Lobby in town, which filled the space to the old Dominic's. And then we have another mattress store, which is, I don't know, that, that's kind of a story unto itself. We've become, you know, Libertyville's like the, you know, the car dealer capital in this area. We, I think we've become the mattress capital, you know? <laughs> and uh, I even told my wife, I said, we ought to bring uh, Storto along and, and go visit, you know, probably about 15 places where you can buy a mattress in town. She actually thought it was funny, which doesn't always occur when I say something that I think is funny, you know? But this year I'll be, since I'm digressing along the marriage line here, I'll be married 41 years this uh, June, so. So we get along within reason. Okay, uh, next is the, the ongoing development. Uh, well, which it, it, ongoing developments in town are, you know, obviously the AMC Theater, which is soon to open. Uh, the new P uh, Panera and the mattress store next door to it. What's the name of this one? American Mattress. American Mattress. Oh, is that the guys that are in Mundelein right now? I think so, yeah. 
Yeah, oh boy, okay. Uh, Menard's Home Improvement Stores is uh, being developed. Jason's Deli, there's a new driveway access from uh, Milwaukee Avenue. Is that up there? Oh, okay. Uh, Oaks, of, uh, Oaks of Vernon Hills are uh, nearing completion. And then, of course, there's a new memory care facility on uh, uh, Route 21 across from the Juvie Center. Huh? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, but across the street. Yeah, near, yeah, Walter E. Smith. Uh, anticipated developments, uh, 850 Milwaukee Avenue, repurpose and remodel. Uh, that's the, uh, the old uh, the Fifth Third Bank uh, building. And Northwestern Hospital wants to go in there. Uh, we had a presentation from Uncle Julio's, uh, a kind of an upscale Mexican Tex-Mex restaurant. And uh, who is it, Verizon? T-Mobile. T-Mobile. And then there's a couple other spaces. So uh, that should, I don't, you know, what would we predict on that? Would it be open maybe next year, in the next year or so? Yeah, maybe, maybe in the next 15 months. Uh, there's going to be an expansion of the uh, uh, Aspen Drive uh, Library, the parking lot. Uh, oops. Need some water. Is that all right, Chet? Okay, cheers. College of Lake County Chemistry Lab edition. Is that started yet? No. No. When is that going to start? Uh, we're still in the permitting stage. Uh, it's hard to predict, but it's like 30 Okay. Uh, I, I can say for po you know possible future development in town, too, would be a, uh, a full service extended care nursing home facility. Uh, which obviously you have to get certification from the state, but uh, this is some of the same people that built uh, the Victory Center, the senior housing, they want to you know, take in the, the full extended care facility and somewhere in town. So um, public works, challenging winter, not so much this year, was it? Dave? Much easier than the previous. Previous winter, I know, because I li listened to it so many times, I think we had 26 days that were below zero. And then we had 65 inches of snow. Not this year, but the year before. This year we totaled, what, 35 inches? Fifth largest snowstorm in history. How many inches was that, Dave? Dave. Okay, okay. Uh, increased use of anti-icing anti products, including beet juice, that allow us to maintain a sufficient supply of salt. That, is that the, the liquid we would spread before the storm? It is. It, is. So it leaves the, the thin stripings on the street. Okay. Emerald ash borer. We've removed 1,090 ash trees. If my memory serves me right, I think we have to remove a grand total of 3,600. Good memory, yes. Yeah, and will, will that be completed this year or maybe? Uh, this year we have 800 uh, ash trees to address. Next year we'll probably drop down to 600 and then we would have made it through all 3,600 trees. Other than there's a few of them that have been injected that uh, yeah. you know, will sustain for a few more years. Is there any recommendation like for people that have ash borers, you know, ash trees on their own property, what they should be doing? Uh, if you haven't treated your tree by now, it's probably too far along that uh, it will not survive. The 
techniques that we've used or the product is uh, triage. And uh, if it's injected in the tree, it uh, doesn't mean that it will survive. It will just slow down, uh, ultimately, its, uh, its death. So uh, it'll just extend its life. And if, so, if so recommendations, um, you know, really, if they need any help, they contact our, uh, our forester and we'll go out and take a look at it. But many of them are so far along that uh, they, they will not make it. Green ash, I, I wouldn't bother injecting green ash. White ash, they seem to be surviving a little bit better than the green. And we could help somebody determine what, what kind of type of ash, I mean, ash borer it is. We will be able to help them with yeah. what the tree looks like and whether it'll survive. Yeah, because I can remember, you know, when Trustee Schultz and I were out knocking on doors in Gross Point. I mean, there was some people that had backyards full of ash trees. And they go, well, what, what can we do about it? I said, well, you know, it's on your property, and unfortunately, we, we're not going to come in and take it down. Uh, so I, you know, I got empathy for those folks because I know we, uh, <clears throat> when Gross Point Village was was brought in, that was an old nursery, and it was a nursery uh, owned by the Fiore uh, family. And <clears throat> I, I don't know, we saved a lot of trees over there. It's probably in excess of a thousand, I would guess. And and also. As a result, because you know it was a nursery and everything was properly root pruned, we were able to transplant about 2,000 trees around Vernon Hills, which some of them were probably ash, right? They were. Yeah. <laughs> Little did we know, but uh, in, in that respect, it's a, yeah. I mean, that's a tragedy that we're, you know, we got to lose this many trees, and uh, but I guess you know disease happens, so. Uh, we're nearing completion of our EAB removal replacement program. Okay. Road rehabilitation program. Uh, we completed 3.3 miles of streets during 2014 road rehab program. This year starts what? Soon, right? It has already started. April 27th? This week, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, included in, in not, th not this year, but probably two years down the line, we're looking seriously at, uh, you know, improvements at uh, uh, Lakeview and 60, uh, Lakeview and Hawthorne Parkway, and also uh, Lakeview and Phillips. And I think that there'll probably be a, a significant resurface uh, jab on Lakeview as you approach Route 60 from the south, and at some point. To pass that, that 2017 date, uh, we also have plans to improve uh, fairway in Route 60. Is that, am I missing one? That's the main, main ones, yeah. Yeah, uh, which should hopefully improve traffic flow through those areas during the morning and evening rush, and even if it gets crazy around the holiday season. So at the, uh, <clears throat> the VHAC, which is the old uh, Nike Missile Base, partnered with American Hotel Register on, pa on a pathway connection between uh, the baseball fields and their property to accommodate tournaments and other community events. Uh, <clears throat> American Hotel Register has been a good partner uh, with the village and with the high school for years. Uh, it's approximately 25 acres that they've uh, leased to the uh, Vernon Hills High School for about $1 a year. And uh, that's where you have a lot of practice fields, whether it's for football or baseball or girls softball, and uh, which, is, which is great. But in essence, some of these tournaments we have in the summer now, baseball, softball, and then lacrosse America, we get what do we get, about 100 teams come in with Lacrosse America? 235. Two, yeah, oh, 235, okay. This year it's up to 235. So anyway, there's literally thousands of people come here because the parents come, the you know friends come, brothers and sisters come of the players. So, that's a, so this will help this pathway. Um, work in Greg's Landing includes extending St. Andrew's Storm Sewer, adding two 
catch basin inlets, curb, gutter, and roadway patching, and the installation of a new driveway apron. You want to elaborate on that one a little? This was something that was uh, just a storm sewer that was needed in the roadway, so uh, our public works staff uh, did it in-house because uh, it wasn't budgeted and we needed to uh, do it uh, less expensive. So it was something that my staff put together and uh, solved a, a roadway drainage issue that was pretty pretty severe. Everything had settled out. So. Yeah, okay. Now, do we have any plan for this year? Like, you know, storm sewer projects at all? Uh, Evergreen Lake, there's uh, the northwest corner that has some old larger CMP pipe that needs to be replaced. So we're looking at that. Uh, because of some of the things happening in Springfield, we're uh, delaying that project until August or so. But uh, yeah, okay. it demands some attention. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, I guess the... You know, a good, very good thing about our town, uh, <clears throat> we don't flood much, and uh, that's real important. And part of that is because of the fact we have, we maintain everything as best we can. And I know we've, over the years, when, when a neighborhood has had a problem, we try to address it and, and actually, you know, protect them from, from flood water. And I remember we had an incident, uh, it's probably at least 10 years ago, where it made all the news stations because the water was actually flowing through the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, that involved us to improve the basin over here by the uh, now mobile gas station. And then, what was that, the old- Monterey? Yeah, Monterey, yeah. I know I went, there, there used to, <laughs> The, all the water, I think, from what is it, uh, Gross Point Village, every, everything would drain in there, and then it, it pooled, and there was a, a grate back there, but it was, what kind of grate was that? Because it, it would get clacked. Just a large open grate. Yeah, but it, was it smaller holes, or was it bigger? I don't remember now. Uh, it was right next to the railroad track, so just a lot of debris from the trees. It's yeah, so we'd have to go over there and pop it periodically, our public works guys. And to see this, I mean, it was big, big whirlpool would be created. And you have to thank God nobody ever fell in it, you know, because it was incredibly dangerous. And I remember, I think it was Tom Cook and I, we went over there when all this was happening. We we're going, oh my God. So, uh, Anyway, we put in a, what, a 54-inch pipe? Yeah, we extended the... Uh, Between so the houses? There was a culvert underneath the railroad, so yeah. we connected that right into the storm sewer. And I remember the storm, the water is flowing, and it's up against someone's patio back door. Oh, it ran in. And they're trying yeah. to make the decision, what do I do? And the water filled up on the glass, and they made the decision to open up the door and I'll let the water run through. So I don't think yeah. insurance covered it because of that. I don't. Well, it depends on who their agent was. Uh, in any event, <laughs> yes, Chester. The installation of the new driveway apron in Grace Landing, is that because you're going to dig up an existing driveway to put in the catch basin? Uh, it, th that's something we did uh, over the past year, and it was just a, a depression within the roadway that had settled out because of an old field tile, and we've had uh, issues over the years with it. So uh, just added a couple of catch basins. Uh, not a huge uh, project, but something that was important to all the area residents within that subdivision that drive through there. And that's an existing homeowner's driveway then? Um, it was necessary because we were doing some curb work and the, uh, the drainage structures that we had to touch their apron, so we had to take care of their apron for that one home. Okay. Uh, Greg's Parkway and Hunt Huntington Drive, new pedestrian signs were installed and crosswalks were striped. When was that done, Dave? Uh, that was last, uh, last spring. Okay. Mayor? Yes. I don't, I don't know if we can completely legislate courtesy, courtesy and, and, you know, doing the right thing on something like that. But, yeah, they should be stopping. I don't know. Maybe the chief can 
speak to that one a little. Um, we're in the process of working with Dave and his guys right now. There's 13 crosswalks on Gregory Park right now. Thanks. Like, I need a microphone to be heard. Uh, there's 13 crosswalks on Greg's Parkway that extend from Milwaukee Avenue over to Butterfield. We're in the process of ordering signs and having the new signs posted that says, state law, uh, you must yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk. Now I do, and, and we have done a number of uh, enforcement details out there on Greg's. Even though it's, it should be noted that even though it says it's, you know, you must yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk, the way the statute is written, it says, the pedestrians, A, must be in the crosswalk for the cars to have to stop. It's not like Wisconsin where you, if somebody approaches the curb, cars will come to a stop and yield to pedestrians. It, it, people just don't do that here in Illinois. Um, and the second thing is, is that it only applies where you're in the lanes of travel where the cars are at the time. So in other words, if you have a, if you have a two lane roadway, one lane each direction, and someone is crossing the road on the left side and traffic is moving on the right hand side, by the law they don't have to stop. Common sense would say you do and common courtesy would say you do. So it is an educational effort that we have been working on and we will still continue to work on. Okay. Uh, obviously there's street and pedestrian signs were upgraded around the ha both Hawthorne schools. The Arbor Theater uh, received upgrades, including replacement of irrigation system, pruning of Rose Garden and Pond area. Uh, Arbor, Arbor Theater educational enhancements like tree identification markers were fabricated and installed. How many different species of trees do we got over there, Dave? <laughs> we don't have any ash trees, do we? Uh, <laughs> we no longer have ash trees. Yeah, there. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's a lot of different. There's a, a lot of different trees out there. I don't have a number. But for there's you. plaques now. And now uh, for some of the, you know, because there's schools in the, uh, the area, we figured sure. we'd put some signs out there, educational, as they walk up, they're curious what that tree is. They can look down to the sign and yeah. help with educating on uh, trees. Okay. All right, uh, well, everybody's read what's up on the screen, but in essence, uh, Arbor Theater, uh, the, the River Grove Historical Oak Tree area was improved by Public Works. Does everybody know where that's at? That's right there at 45 and uh, Prairie Buffalo Grove Road. That's the, the big old oak tree, right? You know, that we what'd you say? Oh, how old is that, Dave? It's a couple hundred years old? Uh, they're, they're not certain, but uh, it's approaching 200 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, the, the board did a good job in terms of uh, developing that subdivision to save that tree and put right. it in the outlot. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's got its own little protected area. Yeah. Uh, and then we planted 1,500 perennial flowers and placed 10 new planters on properties. So that's every, all over? Throughout the village, right. Is that in the medians? It's included in the medians also. Yeah, yeah so like the median, for example, we. I mean, well, out front here, right? We do the work on that uh, entrance here. All of our different buildings, uh, Butterfield Road planters, Hawthorne Parkway. Yeah, no, et right there at the corner of Lakeview and, uh, and Hawthorne Parkway. So. The new planter is uh, adds a nice touch. Thank you. Okay. What, do you got one by your house or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it would be okay. <laughs> it was... <laughs> As long as it was on public property. Okay, Vernon Hills has a reputation as a safe place to live, work, shop, and celebrate. Since 2009, serious crimes have dropped by over 17%. And the department has trained officers on the use of, uh, how do you say, Nalazion? Nalaxone. Nalaxone, okay. Uh, we are only one of two communities in Illinois that use Nalaxone to counter heroin overdoses, which is unfortunate. We've had, how many have we actually had in town over the years now? Six or seven. Did they all, not, not all resulting in death though? Uh, I think we've had more than that in terms of just general overdoses, but I believe we've had six or seven deaths. Yeah, and well, and were some of them 
all in, was it in Vernon Hills or were they away at school or were um, young adults? I'm just referring to the ones that occurred here in Vernon okay. Hills. I think the youngest is, was 15. Uh, the oldest was probably, I'm only guessing here, but around 30. Yeah. The, the, I, oh, I vividly remember the young girl. Yeah. And, uh, you know, her brother, you know, he actually had the habit. And I don't know, hope he, I, you know, if he's, he beat the habit, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that was, you know, it's very, it's very sad. And, and the schools have certainly taken an initiative to, uh, you know, reach out to the parents and obviously reach out to the children. You know, I mean, the bottom line is don't try it because, you know, it's highly addictive. And I think they're all snorting it, aren't they? A lot of them were injected. Were some snorting too? Or? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, any, that's just a sad state of affairs and we'll continue to, you know, work with the schools and the community to help prevent it, you know, getting the, getting the drugs off the market would be, a bit, you know, yeah. be the best thing, you know, and that's a war, which has been going on forever, so. You want to sit down, Chief, or you want to stand up? Uh oh, it does bring something about caps. No, I'm only kidding. Yeah, uh, per, uh, employee community service and outreach participated in over 10 service projects, including Polar Plunge, Caps on Tap, and the Torch Run, raising thousands of dollars for Special Olympics. Uh, hosted veterans residing at the VA hospital for the annual Jim Heyer. Uh, you know, fishing derby, which is held at Big Bear Lake. Okay. Uh, employee community service and outreach hosted Operation Welcome Home for the Ninth Vernon Hills uh, service member, member, hosted in conjunction with the Lake County Health Department, a pet microchipping and vaccination clinic. Uh, the operation uh, Welcome Home is, Jan, how long have we been doing that? Good morning, Mayor. Uh, we've been doing that uh, since right after the Afghanistan war. As you know, your neighbor, uh, Corporal James Hulse, was right. the first one to come home, yeah. uh, United States Marine Corps, and uh, with his mom and uh, our partner, CFD, we were very excited to welcome him home. And uh, all the way up to this year, David Patak, yeah, also Patak, your neighbor, yeah. Sergeant, U.S. Army, uh, who served in the Middle East as a VIP protection for the generals, was welcomed home this year. So it's, uh, it's been uh, maybe 12, 13 years since uh, the conflict in Afghanistan started. Okay. It's been a great COP project and a great part of uh, you know, our policing efforts. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, participation in Operation Stand Down, where law enforcement partners Area high, uh, area high schools to raise awareness of homeless and at-risk veterans in need of services. The department received the President's Bronze Community Service Award for its contribution to the service of Americans' veterans. <laughs> Employee Community Service Outreach continued, hosted and participated in a National uh, Night Out event with over 1,000 residents attending. We've been doing that for years. What was that? 20 years, 25 years? At least 20. Yeah. Participated with more than 30 agencies in the annual Lake County Law Enforcement Exhibit at Westfield Mall. I, you know, it's, uh, you get to see every, every, every kind of vehicle we got, right? And what, el what else is featured there, uh, Chief? Uh, they have the SWAT teams. Uh, they've had this last year, they had two helicopter groups in. Uh, Air One police support groups from uh, up in Winthrop Harbor. Uh, virtually, they have canine demonstrations. Canine, yeah, yeah. yeah, they've had virtually everything. They have crime prevention tips. Uh, we've had the the shoot don't shoot uh, scenarios available for people to do the uh, the situational shooting, provided they have a vacant storefront in the mall, which this last year they didn't, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah. So there's every opportunity to meet all the police departments from the area and see all the equipment that we have available to us. Yeah, the the, uh, the shooting uh, exhibition is electronic. Yeah, I suppose we should clarify that. It's electric. <laughs> well, no, I, I, no, it, it it's electronic. 
But it's re it's real important to train the officers because I remember I did it many years ago and I got I don't know I shot everybody so <laughs> it was it was I wouldn't have been <laughs> I would have been in jail so uh, you know in essence it, but it's a good great training tool so yes. and we're in the process right now of uh, remodeling uh, renovating uh, the police department's uh, main uh, building and also the old American family building. Correct. The, uh, the work is almost complete in the old American family building, which is now our communication center. And they'll be, I believe they're taking the front doors off today to start bringing in the demolition equipment. Good. And we have the architects here. What do you, what do you, does that either brother want to speak to this, the Hesners? Things are going well. We're going to utilize what that open court though was that about 800 square feet. It's a, it's a little bit more than that, uh, but the, the central corridor. Uh, or, and one that, that serves uh, the public in a, in a more public fashion. Um, things, are, things are going well on that project. Things are moving along. And uh, we hope to have that thing completed by this fall. OK, great. <laughs> yeah, uh, training and career development. Uh, for this, again, is during 2014, command staff implemented a department-wide leadership development program, which includes both sworn and non-sworn employees. Joint Dispatch Center. Vernon Hills Community Center shared with Countryside Fire Protection District added Lincolnshire Police Department and Knollwood Fire Protection District in 2014. Uh, the partnership with the Countryside Fire Protection District continues to be a cost-sharing opportunity for the communities that we serve. Is that true, Chief uh, Steingart? You want to speak to that one? Yes, we've realized a great amount of efficiency and cost savings for all the communities involved. And uh, it's become kind of a model for other folks to look at. And it's, it's been a great move for everybody. Good. And it, it, of course, it always helps with response times, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. OK, thank you. All right. Woo. Ongoing challenges, huh? State dire uh, financial condition, public safety pension reform, workers' comp reform, maintaining our AAA ratings, like to raise the state's bond rating. What is that at right now, Larry, state of Illinois? I do not remember you. I know it's the lowest of all the. Is it, is it B or A, or is it any kind of A, or is it B? I, I think. I think it may, may be a B triple A, but I do not remember for sure. So I'm. Yeah. Well, anyway, obviously everybody understands it to, to some degree that the better your rating, the lower the interest rate. And uh, I think when we refinance finance, what some of the bonds at the, the TIF district didn't it drop down to like 1.9 percent? Right. That's correct. And that was what went from six. Is that wasn't there some as high as six percent? It, it was about six point eight. Yeah. And then how, and how part, much part, money did that save us, or how much will it save us? Um, it it saved us oh in the area of about one and a half million dollars. Right. And part of it was we went from a revenue bond to a geo bond. And okay. All right. Um, maintain our level of service to our residents maintaining our leadership as a regional shopping center, enhancing revenue sources to fund municipal operations. I guess, you know, I would, I would think if you're a taxpayer and you live in this town, you realize you don't pay a property tax to the village. And uh, hopefully we can keep it that way in perpetuity. And uh, we, 
you know, we did a lot, lot during the Great Recession that involved keeping the uh, centers uh, alive and uh, thriving by, you know, we did a series of some sales tax agreements like with Steinhoffels, uh, Gordman's, uh, Sir H. H. Gregg, Dix, and Mariano's, which was has been a great addition since the only grocery store, you know, Dominic's left. Of course, you, you had Target and then Sam's Club, but at Sam's Club, obviously, you, know, you buy a, you know, a jar of mayonnaise and it'll last you the rest of your life, you know? So, uh, so Mariano's coming to town, I think, is, I think most people are happy about that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, going forward, you know, we, we still have some, you know, valuable uh, land that's, uh, you know, zoned for retail. And I think uh, we're going to see activity on, on, you know, some, some real uh, important pieces in town in the next year or so. So, uh, and that's all I got. Other than uh, that, I'm going to, you know, open it up to, for questions. Trustee Schultz. Isn't it true that even though the village raised the uh, sales tax by a quarter percent, we are still one of the lowest sales tax rates in Lake County and oh, yeah. lower yeah. than our neighboring communities? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, some, some didn't raise it, but then I think, you know, some of the, the larger towns have had a higher sales tax than us for quite a while. So. Uh, you know, and, that, and this this was done with you know, uh, you know a lot of uh, you know thought going into it to just you know offset some of these expenses we've incurred, you know, spe you know especially with Westfield, which is you know a fifty million dollar improvement there, and you know some of these other sales tax agreements we've entered into also. But I would think right now, I mean, for example, like with Mariano's, how, how much is that? you know, payback going to, you know, ter uh, end sooner because they, they, our model, I think we base it on half of what they do in sales a year. Um, we, uh, I, I, I guess I have some, some requirement not to be too specific, but I think we're looking at the summer of 2016 having it paid off. Yeah. And that's a, a lot sooner than... Yeah, it would have been, what, 10 years? Um, was it a 10 year or, um, or 15? I think it was 10, but I'm, I'm not positive. I think it was. Ten, yeah, 10, it's a yeah. 10 years. So this is going to be paid off in what, four? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. So yeah. hopefully, <laughs> well, I mean, that means we will get the full sales tax. You know, we're still getting sales tax, but now we're going to get all the sales tax. So hopefully that's happening with some of the other uh, dealers. Maybe not. Yeah. But anyway, so keep shopping in Vernon Hills. Yes, ma'am. Two very hard-hitting questions. One, what restaurants are going into the mall? <laughs> Number two, what are the plans for the Sam's Club and Sam's Club Nordstrom? Uh, uh, you mean a Nordstrom's rack? <laughs> That's a real deal, but also... No, I know that. <laughs> yeah, you're a model of consistency. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. yeah. You always ask. I, but, I don't feel bad. A lot of people would like, we'd love to see a Nordstrom's. And uh, Westfield obviously has a relationship with them. So, you know, it, it, it'll come one day. Let's see how, the, how this uh, new, new uh, you know, I guess entertainment component, you know, helps the other businesses in there. And, you know. Yeah, oh, I'm sure they are. I, I don't, you know, there's some people, maybe there's somebody in the room that has some knowledge, but if they're in negotiations still, you know, all it is is a rumor. You know. Yes, ma'am. You know, uh, they they obviously approached us, approached Cudio. Um, You know, even though we have two other stores, you know, I think you have a situation where uh, all of them do 
you know, got their own niches within reason. Uh, the actual uh, Menards project, uh, you know, I, I've, I think we were explained in, in, a, uh, in their kind of pr uh, prospectus that they've done this before where they're in close proximity to another home improvement store. And they all, you know, I think they all, again, provide varying degrees of expertise and service uh, within. But with that said, you know, it's, it's like we certainly don't want to ever discriminate against, say, another grocery store coming into town. Even though, we, you know, we got a Sam's Club, we got the Target, we got Mariano's. But, I mean, if another grocery store comes, we're not going to say, well, we got three grocery stores. And, and the reality is, one thing about big boxes, in this case, uh, Menards uh, would, would actually generate over six or 700,000 a year for the schools. Whether, you know, two thirds probably going to the grammar schools, uh, two thirds going to the, to the high school. The sales tax would be probably another $600,000 which we use to do capital improvements throughout this whole town. Uh, you know, so in, in the fact that I know there's people that were upset about it going there simply because, you know, I don't know if they would have been upset about anything going there, okay? Uh, that has been zoned that way since 1988. And I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of like what's across the street, you know? I mean, it's... It always, was always designated in the original annexation agreement to be developed as retail. So, you know, I know, uh, so, I, you know, it's pending in court. We're going to get a ruling on it at the end of May, and we'll see what happens from there. What is the anticipated completion of that story? Well, it, it's kind of, you know, uh, well, I mean, ordinarily a year. Would it take a year? Will it be next year or this year? Oh, no. <laughs> They've been working on site improvements, as I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, if they were to start in the spring, let's say towards the end of May or early uh, June, that would be probably about a, a 10 to 12 month process to be open. I'm, I'm not sure if everyone here is aware, but it's a two story Menards. So it's a, it's a larger building than what your uh, typical uh, Menards would be. So I think we're looking at first quarter 2016. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Yes. This, well, fit, Carrie. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, my question is, what, is Showplace 8 going to stay open? And what's happening with Walmart? I hear rumors. You know, Showplace 8 is owned, I believe, by AMC. So maybe it'll go back to being what it was originally, where it was discounted tickets. You remember? Right. I so I, you know, that's that's a good question. We'll have to ask uh, the folks at Westfield. Well, more accurately, AMC. So I, I can't I, I honestly answer that one. Walmart, you know, I I, I think they're going to do their superstore down in Mundelein, and then I I, yeah, I would think it'll affect this store store at some point in time unless they like the numbers that are coming in there, you know, from their own sales here. So again, we haven't had any recent conversations with them, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, plus they own it. So somebody would have to go in and buy it. But one thing you can do with a big box, you can turn it into smaller boxes. And unfortunately that happened, for example, when the Kmart went out. Remember, that was almost 200,000 square feet. And now you got all those stores over there. That, that literally is the, those stores are the same footprint as when came was there, because that was so large. So uh, anyway, yeah, no, we'll, you know, we'll try to find something out on both of us. Plus, we, like I said earlier, we're trying to bring more senior housing to town, so, uh, which will be good too, so. Yes, Chet. Can you tell us more about the proposed Pulte development on the Cuneo Mansion property? Uh, sure. I, you know, it, 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 if they, did they ever come before us? No, they haven't. You know, it's kind of languishing. Uh, you know, there's other, 
I guess, uh, variables involved, and it involves the county. Uh, there's actually, you know, an in-place uh, land management agreement and then a sewer and water agreement that was signed by everybody <clears throat> back in 1996 when we were doing, uh, you know, Greg's Landing. So the sewer and water, sanitary sewer, and obviously our tap water, uh, that's owned and maintained by the county. So there's a, uh, <clears throat> so they're involved in reviewing the site plan in this instance with us. But, uh, you know, I guess in reality, there's still uh, permitting allowed for probably these 100, approximately 100, 100 single family homes. Uh, from the old agreement, because we were allowed uh, to build 2,200 homes <clears throat> that included uh, north of the EJ and E railroad tracks and south. And I think, what are we at now? 21 or? Well, the, the annexation agreement basically said 2,100 max. Was it 21? We are um, within 100 units of that. Yeah, so, but we, but again, we're working now, you know, I mean, we, we've seen the concept, we, we like it, but uh, we have to have meetings now with the county <clears throat> to still get, you know, final, final approval, so. Acreage-wise, the, so, the initial uh, agreement for that land was developing 10 acres. Okay, my understanding is that the new plan is requesting 50 acres. There's, it's a, about 97 acres there. 50 is untouchable <clears throat> as the museum and gardens. And then the 47, of which is not all buildable, uh, is where they, we'd have to rezone it. Now, 50 acres seems like a lot. What's nice about the current Cuneo property there is, you know, you approach uh, Vernon Hills from the south, and you approach all the shopping center. You approach Vernon Hills from the north. You approach all the car dealerships. And it's nice to have that nice green belt Along Milwaukee Avenue and yeah, the well, that, trees. that'll be that could be maintained and it will be. What what there what would would happen in there? There'd be, you know, some nice sidewalks, paths in there that, uh, you know, would actually connect to the Cuneo Museum and Gardens. You know, there won't be road connections, but there'll be like you probably go over there and ride your bike, you know, or jog or whatever you want to do. So, I I think the 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 plans we've seen are. Uh, pretty impressive, and in these single-family houses, we start in the area of about seven hundred thousand dollars. If uh, the village can maintain all that land along Milwaukee Avenue as a green belt, you know, require a, a large setback. Yeah, and if when several we, hundred yards away from Milwaukee Avenue, right. feet from Milwaukee Avenue, and yeah, maybe it's probably more than that. It's probably, you know, fifteen hundred feet. You know, for all I, from the traffic light to the main entrance, something like that. And again, that's but we haven't approved this yet. And again, I mean, we 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 have a partner in this approval process, and it's and it's the county. And look at that 50 acres. Like you said, that 50 acres will take up uh, pretty much 50 percent of the existing land. Right. And whatever can be done to reduce that 50 acre footprint. Well, right now, that's kind of a blighted area in there when you, when you look at what, you know, the old houses that they left. I don't think anybody would want to move into one, you know. I don't even, you know, think, you know, the guys that are, you know, uh, the home improvement guys are on the cable shows could do, do much with a couple of those residences there. So, okay. Uh, anybody have any questions for staff? I mean, well, if you have them for me, that's fine. A lot more residents, areas, uh, senior residents, and so on. One of the things I was really excited about was seeing on 45 the uh, new sidewalk. Uh, oh, yeah. Put through. That's been uh, fair. <laughs> I'm a bicyclist yeah, myself. That's, yeah, we tried to put sidewalks everywhere. Yeah, that was going to be my question was, you know, are you giving consideration to making sure there's mobile traffic, you know, pedestrian traffic through fairs that are not across major streets, uh, yeah. sidewalks, bike paths. Well, there's probably going to be a sidewalk extension at the uh, the senior, I mean, the, the, the well, the memory center being built on Milwaukee. 
Yeah, uh, good question. As far as our, our bike path uh, program, sidewalk and extension, we've identified a number of areas that uh, have deficiencies. The, the stretch across the Oaks has been something we've been working at uh, for a long time because now you can ride your bike from here all the way to the half day area, 21 and 45. Um, Milwaukee Avenue, we've worked towards extending that, um, so we're we're doing well on Milwaukee Avenue. Yeah, that would probably if they if that sidewalk gets extended up to Walter E. Smith, that would probably be the final connection, wouldn't it? So so that would uh, make that connection, and then uh, we're we're looking uh, on 60, we extended some uh, of that. We're looking at potentially Butterfield Road, but there's a lot of impediments with the you know south of 60 with the railroad and. Uh, special management areas, stormwater, floodplains, et cetera. Uh, we, we were looking at the EJ&E &E and how could we extend bike paths along both sides of the EJ&E &E to connect Butterfield Road with Indian Wood and hopefully all the way to Milwaukee Avenue. So that's our planning and uh, just comes down to money. So. Yeah, yeah, the Butterfield Road area was where I was thinking of specifically too. I, I constantly see people taking their lives in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> walking along there so thank you thank you very much yeah, yeah i mean you, one thing with butterfield road you know you can get into the you know the craig's landing subdivision and then you just kind of weave your way around if you're crossing into the township 80 acres you know across the street you know at, at golf and uh butterfield yeah yeah but I mean, if you're out, if you're out biking, you can take the detour, go to actually go where well, you'd wind up out at by Milwaukee Avenue, right? Yeah, yeah. And and we've tried to, uh, you know, so the housing on the east side as you're going northbound, and then it, it becomes it used to be Rexams that that's now Mundelein. Uh, tried to work through some solutions. We even tried to talk with the railroad about can we get an overpass uh, to have a connection so you can get towards Deer Path. Uh, I think that had a price tag of like $2.4 million. Yeah. So we look to extend some other paths first. So. Yes. Um, one more question for Mr. Brown. Uh, in regards to our skunk problem, what are the plans? What's the proposal for this year? And how are we going to attack that issue? So I live is, near. Is that stumps or skunk? Skunks. skunks. Yeah. We have like the worst problem in Illinois. Is that, right? is that the chief problem? Yeah. I deal is, with the skunks. Oh, there we go. The skunks. <laughs> I got a neighbor though that he's caught as many skunks as our skunk trappers. Skunk eradicators? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the skunk situation is something that we have to deal with on an annual basis. Um, you know, we're the only community that's actually doing anything about it. Generally speaking, we cannot go onto private property and trap skunks. And there are certain times of the year when the skunks, their migration is very evident. This time of the year is times when, uh, well, right after, the, right after the snow melts and right to about now is mating season, you'll see a few of them out. You may even smell one or two, but it's not as prevalent as it is in the fall. Once they have their babies, they grow up during the course of the summer, and then in fall, just like when your kids go away to college or move out of the home, they throw the kids out of the home too. And now you have um, adolescent skunks or young adult skunks that are all wandering through the neighborhoods trying to find their own den, their own nest, and their own place for next year. Those are the ones you see out sometimes during the daytime. Those are the ones you see out in the afternoon. And about 90% of them are the ones that are getting run over by cars out on the street. When in the fall, we have a, we've had a plan in place now the last two years. When they start becoming active, we have started working with uh, the private trapper and the park district to set up traps on public property. We still can't go onto private property to do anything about it, um, but we go onto public property in the rights of ways. We've baited traps, and the skunks are removed. You know, we do the best we can. These are these are little critters that live underground. I hope, yeah, I hope yeah. that helps. Yeah. Well, my again, going back to my neighbor here, he's got one of these cylinders, and you know, it's got the door on it, and you put the, you know, the food in there. So he put it in my backyard one night, and and uh, I had the brainstorm of uh, putting down bread crumbs and pieces leading up to it and we caught one <laughs> and I don't you know and it, some of the bread was eaten so uh, so then you know so sometimes we use different you know uh, foods foods to attract them so that, I thought that was pretty good caught a skunk 
do I, I, it's up to you. Because I'm not going to tell you what happens to skunks no, in my neighborhood. We can't talk about that. Yeah, can't just, talk just, about that. I got to turn the mic off if you want to know the truth. <laughs> yeah, honestly, there's all kinds of laws that deal with fur-bearing animals in the state of Illinois. And these are one of the animals. This is also one of the animals that have the highest rate of rabies. So there is some leeway there. Um, we can't give you any guidance and tell you what you should do. So read between the lines. Okay. Um, For on that note, do, do we you, want to say something? Yeah, I, I guess, I don't know if you, Mike, if you want to talk about maybe some preventive ideas to put out for folks. How do you prevent skunks from? Well, around your house, skunks like to get underneath your concrete porch. Sometimes there's a hollow area under there. They like to use that as a den. Also under your uh, deck, if you have a deck off the back of your house. So for concrete porches, you could uh, do what you can to fill in those voids. Um, and then for your deck, uh, you could use uh, a, a thick wire mesh around the perimeter of the deck from the bottom of the joist and then buried into the ground. And that'll uh, help eliminate some of their favorite areas for dens. Yeah, you know, the, again, my skunk hunting neighbor, he had the pleasure of having 13 babies born, born under his front porch about three or four years ago. So he really doesn't like skunks. Uh, so anyway, uh, I thank all you folks for coming here this morning. I hope you learned something about the village. If you ever have questions, just you know, call call here, call me. I'm in the phone book. Uh, so, you have a nice day. <laughs>